Hey you and welcome, my name is Mike, and in this old video we are going to Florida, yeah. Of course we are, because Florida is Florida. No. Where else, you know, at this point, I've gotten over my shocked face when we are going there, going back to, yet again, America's dong. When I go there telling you about these true crime cases, it's either gonna be wacky, it's gonna be horrific. This story, it matches up with all of what I just said, and it is the tale of Sarah Boone. I don't think you all understand who I am, where... Okay. Well, tell me. I mean, I've always been a straight-A student. I am an outstanding mother to my son. I excel at everything. And it is just... And by that I mean infuriating if that little sound effect didn't give it away. Yeah, I'll check me down here. I hope you are ready to meet one of the worst characters I've ever covered. She's a horrible liar, she's narcissistic, and it kind of all just like rounds into a big ol' shit sandwich. But boy is that sandwich delicious. So the emotions you will feel today will be bafflement, anger and claustrophobia uh, too if if you if you suffer from that I'm sorry if you do because one aspect of this case is very confining and um I don't like reviewing that part of it either but we will because we have to bafflement though was the main emotion I felt when I was researching into this case uh, and I'm an emotionless husk so it's it's pretty up there by the way you might have noticed uh, I have finally finally escaped the black void I have been trapped in for the last five years, yeah. Um, I also changed my backdrop. All right, I covered a new filming setup, let's move on. So what we got here is good old gal Sarah Boone in the hot seat, sweating bullets. And I was like, oh, he's in the talking still. And whatever happened was clearly unintentional, am I right? Because that is her favorite word to use. Unintentional, unintentional. Not intentional. It was not intentional. It's not malicious. Game goes wrong. The footage, though, she took herself would kind of, kind of disagree with her statements. We'll get to it. That's my name. Don't wear it up. Really is a dumb move, though, on her part, to be fair. I mean, why would you record yourself doing something horrific to another person and you can hear, you know, the screams? Like, do you want that to pop up on your Apple memories or something? Like... Oh, remember that. But what got her here? And what, well, what led to here? Well, for that, guys, we gotta go to Orange County, Florida. And also back a few years. Uh, let's give it a go. Let's get into the boon goon. On the 24th of February, 2020, at one minute past 1 p.m., a 911 call was made to the Orange County Sheriff's Department. 911, what is the location of your emergency? 4748 France Court, apartment 3. The caller was a woman named Sarah Boone, and she was the aforementioned Boon Goon. Sarah was calling from an apartment she shared with her boyfriend George in Franz Court, Winter Park. And so that afternoon, sunny Florida, you know, get your tan on, Sarah was yapping away to the 911 operator. And you know, she was pretty straight up with the reason she was calling today. She wasn't beating around the bush, you know, she was straight into it. She said, listen here, I've got something to tell you. Is this a police or medical? My boyfriend is dead. After directing the emergency responders to the correct uh, apartment, she had to kind of explain, uh, maybe just, just briefly, how did he come to be uh, dead? Her explanation of her current circumstances was odd at best. Now tell me exactly what happened there. Uh, my boyfriend and I were playing last night, and mm -hmm. I put him in his case when we were playing. And okay. Like kind of hide and seek kind of thing. So I fell asleep, and I woke up, and he was dead in the suitcase. So I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. See, her and her fella had been fooling around, though not in the way you would think, even though they're grown-ups. No, no, not that sort of fooling around. Playing hide and seek. Right? Okay, so she's like, well, you know, he got into the suitcase, I fell asleep, I woke up, he was a goner. I don't know what happened. Don't know what happened. Kind of sounds like you do, though. Confirm this. Is he, is he awake at all? Is he conscious at all? No. He's purple. Is he, right, is he breathing? No. Alright. I need you to get, I need you to get him on the floor, flat on his back for I me, did. okay? I did, I did, I tried giving him CPR. Put your other hand on top of that hand. Baby, I'm telling you. Just by okay. looking at him, you can tell. 
Okay. <laughs> Please! Okay, he just gurgled. Okay. So over the following minutes, the 911 man tells her to try CPR, which she says she had already tried. She had removed him from the suitcase. And the way she's, ex you know, the way she explains it, that if she was trying CPR and how he looked, she'd be trying it for a while. What happened? Like, what happened? Other than that, she spends it trying to talk over the operator. One, we were playing two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Keep on pumping for me, ma'am. I'm, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Believe me, I'm doing it, okay? We are playing okay. Eventually, the EMTs arrived and pretty chirpily announced there was nothing to be done. When was the last time anybody saw him? The last night. Okay. We were playing hide and seek. He hit another. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Unfortunately, he's been down too long. There's nothing we can record him. Now that call was pretty grim, and from the sounds of it, um. It was a horrible accident, you know, uh, just playing a game and things went wrong and it happens. Tragically, it does happen around the world all the time. As Sarah said herself, this Right, okay. Horrible. This is horrific. Right on. And, you know, you can imagine the guilt she's feeling having a good time, playing a little game, and it ends like this. Sad as it is, it happens. People playing hide and seek found a great place. No, uh no, you didn't. Tragically, an eight-year-old boy was killed while playing hide-and-seek in his grandparents' house. He became wedged behind appliances, and he died. In India, a 16-year-old girl was the seeker, playing the game in an apartment building, and as she was looking for the hiders, she stuck her head into the elevator shaft to see if anyone was hiding there. At, well, the worst time imaginable. Or this story from Baltimore. 24-year-old Ernest Wilson III, he was playing hide-and-seek with a load of his friends during a party. They were at this place, having a few drinks, dancing, and then doing something for fun, playing hide and seek. Ready or not, here I come! Ernest, he was the seeker, and he Facebook lived while he was seeking. Then, while he was wandering around, he caught a burglar on camera trying and succeeding at breaking into the place. Get your, okay, get your dumb ass on the other side of this gate. This can't be one of my friends. Unfortunately, the burglar had a gun, and he used it on Ernest. Shit. So to give you a bit of background into who the key players are in this case, there's really just two, not counting the detectives, the deputies, and any other law enforcement buckaroo. So we get Sarah, Sarah Boone, the boondog, and her boyfriend, George Torres. Sarah, maiden name Paulson, her Facebook is pretty private, the profile picture is of a baby's eye. Uh, she does have a son, Lucas, and she had previously been married. In 2017, Brian Boone filed for divorce. She lost the ring, she kept the name, and she shared custody of their son. She was originally from Orlando, she graduated from Edgewater High School, and in 2020, she was 42 years of age. She had been in trouble with the law before, uh, very just like min minutely though. In the August of 2015, she was caught speeding. She was doing 54 in a 45 in her Kia. She had to pay a $129 fine for that, and she also had to do a four hour basic driver improvement course. And also in January 1998, when she went by Sarah uh, Paulson, she got caught driving with a suspended license. George, now, by the way, his name is spelt the Spanish way, but it's pronounced the English way, so do not give me shit, commenters. The victim. He was also 42 from the city of Brotherly Love, PA. For work, he was the best employee Ace Hardware ever had, according to himself, though at the time of his death, he was unemployed. He had three daughters, also. So Sarah and George, they lived together in an apartment in uh, Winter Park. It's a small city just northeast of uh, Orlando. So Sarah, she was never too far from home. Uh, George had come quite a bit and he still had a lot of family back in Philly. It was 4748 Franz Court that they called home together. Apartment number three, right opposite one of those lakes Florida's got a shit ton of. Sarah and George had been together for about three years, about three and a half years. Uh, by the time February 2020 kind of rolls around. Now, in Winter Park, the rate of crime is, is, is quite low. Pretty safe city. 
but the rate of this crime is exceedingly low worldwide. But, well, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Had a crime taken place? Sarah said what happened was a horrible accident. And I mean, how do you do that on per... I mean, you know, it, it sounds like an accident. After the 911 call, police arrived. As you can see, the fire and EMTs were already there, but nothing was to be done. Sarah was there waiting for the responding officer. Hello there. Hi. You live here? Yes. Okay, I'll talk to you. We gotta get some information from the fire department. Um, the property manager, I was Tell him really quick, or just we'll so he knows what's that. going on. Where is he at? He walked that way. Oh, don't worry about that. We'll take care of that for you, okay? I really need something to drink. Okay. Well, I got my Dr. Pepper on the counter. Okay, okay. we'll take care of you. Give me one second. Drink. What's going on? What? Who is he to you? Boyfriend? Yes, for like three and a half years. What happened? He and I, we drank last night. We had a what Sarah told the responding officer was this. So I fell asleep. I fell asleep. When did you do CPR? This morning. When I found it before you called. Yes! So the day before, Sunday, Sarah and George, they were chilling at the house. And then at one point, George left. He left to go get some smokes, and that was about it. Sarah's son was not there with them that day. That evening, they were having a, having a grand old time. They were doing some painting. They were doing some puzzles. Playing a little bit of a jigsaw. And they opened together a bottle of Woodbridge Chardonnay. I don't know much about wine. Is that piss, or...? They then decided to play hide and seek. She went upstairs, she hid in the shower, he didn't bother uh, going to search for her. So eventually she came down being like, what the fuck, thought we were playing. Um, and at that point, they thought it would be funny if George got into a suitcase. Now they already had a suitcase there, like in the room. Um, it was basically they were going to give a load of stuff to charity and they were going to put it in the suitcase. But George willingly got into the suitcase and then Sarah zipped him up. She said neither her nor George were drunk at all. They had shared one bottle of wine between the two of them. At some point you put him in the suitcase? No, he got in the suitcase. So okay. he thought it would be funny to be put in the suitcase. So I was like, okay, well, I'm going to joke with you and I'll zip you up and make him, you know, squirm a little bit, whatever it is. But then I fell asleep. Mm -hmm. I fell asleep. Well, you zipped him in there. Yes. Thought it would be funny, a little joke. It was. We both were laughing about it. Okay. And then I fell asleep. Where did you fall asleep at? Upstairs. In your bedroom? Yes. Okay. Totally forgetting that he was in the suitcase still. Okay. And I was like, oh, I forgot he was in the suitcase. Then after midnight at about half 12, Sarah said she was tired. She went up to bed um, and she, she left him there, though, in the suitcase. She figured, though, that he would be able to get out. He'd be able to get out himself. She lay in bed for about 20, 30 minutes, then she fell asleep. He was not able to get out. She then woke up at about 11 p.m. She lay in bed for about an hour. She got up at about 12, half 12. She walked downstairs. He was not looking well. I was awake, but I actually got out of the bed at like 12, 30 ish, whatever. So I came downstairs to grab and I was like, oh, before. he's in the suitcase still. And that's when I found him and I took him out and tried doing CPR and then I called him and then I called you guys. So I don't know if he had a heart attack probably a lot for you to deal with, right? Uh, Brian had arrived. Her ex-husband, he lived just around the corner, essentially, um, because Sarah was due to collect their son from the ex-husband, and he gave Sarah his phone to call 911, and here we are. So this is where the story of Sarah Boone and George Torres starts to kind of writhe and wriggle around uh, a little bit. Zipping someone into a suitcase, a fully grown adult, uh, to boot sounds quite difficult. I mean, I, for for instance, would not get into a suitcase and have somebody zip me up, and I'm not even terribly claustrophobic. But then she left him in there, saying, "Ah, oh, sure, be grand." How? How was she expecting him to get out? All we had was a bottle of wine, literally just a bottle of wine. Okay. Doing puzzle artwork. Then we decided to play hide and seek. That's all that happened. Okay. Oh. She also said that when she went to bed, it took her approximately 20 to 30 minutes of her lying in bed reading tossing and turning, whatever, before she fell asleep. And at no point did she think, huh, you know, he's been in there a while, maybe I should go down? Ah, he'd be fine. At least she knew where he was. Towards the end, though, of those initial statements Sarah was telling to the first police responders and detectives, things could get even worse for Sarah, according to herself. Could it? Yes. It's gonna be a I'm while. afraid for my life. I 
want you to know that. I am afraid that? for my life. His family has never liked me. I'm the blue eyed white devil, is what they call me. So they've never liked me, they've never taken me in, they've never accepted me, I'll put it that way. They're going to kill me. In the way that she thinks. By the way, she keeps asking for water when the police show up, and in like an almost, in an almost comical way. It's actually kind of funny how, how thirsty she keeps claiming she is. Yeah, my Dr. Pepper. I am so cut now. Yeah, my Dr. Pepper. It's on the counter. I'm so thirsty. Like, I'm out of water. Just water. Please find me water. But, um... So the police, they spoke with her, and they also spoke with Brian, who, as I said, he had arrived that day, and he was waiting for the police with Sarah. And this is, once again, where the story starts to, to change uh, a little bit. But like, I don't, like, this was totally like, not intentional. Like, that's what I'm scared about too, like. Okay. We'll, we'll have all the answers, we'll have a lot more It starts to focus in on what was really going on here, I would say. He says, you know, he had their son, he had arrived, Sarah was supposed to pick him up, he didn't see anything. But he did say Sarah and George had a very, very interesting, interesting history together. You got a full fun history. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, yeah, you guys just called him his wife. For the two of them? Yeah, he's been recently like five times. So. Really? Okay, I'm not familiar with him. So, I haven't been here personally. It's So they have he, a... He's currently on parole because of it, so... Um, because of domestic violence with her? Yes, but I mean, like, every time she'd have arrested arrest the next day, she was trying to get a bailed out. According to the neighbors, police would speak with Sarah was almost never not drunk. You know, a lot of people enjoy a few sups now and then, as you go on, she may as well. Um, but Sarah loved nothing more than a few sups all the time. They would say she was almost always either A, tired, meaning hungover, or B, tweaked out on something which is either high or drunk. Sarah had before, she had passed out on neighbors' porches, uh, wandering, she'd be wandering around the streets at all hours. Neighbors would hear banging on the walls of her and George's apartment. They would see her out pretty regularly, and neighbors thought that was her attempt. Sarah, Sarah just didn't want to be in that apartment, presumably with George. And the next door neighbor would share something that's super interesting about the night of. The neighbor's bedroom, it shared a wall with Sarah and George's uh, apartment, and he says that on the night, the Sunday night, the night they were playing hide and seek, he heard at about 10.30, 11 p.m., a loud crash coming from their place. He said the crash came from the staircase area of their home. Okay. Um, do you recall hearing anything coming from apartment three while you were, um, after you had gotten home? Uh, around 10.30 or 11 o'clock, there was a very loud uh, crashing sound where uh, I believe, I'm not sure I haven't been in their apartment with my roommate, but I believe it's the location of the, uh, the staircase. Okay, so, so uh, a little bit above. A, little a bit very above. loud, you said crashing sound? Yeah, like it sounded like something had been like falling down the stairs. Because it started up high and then it ended uh, low. Okay, and when you heard the, uh, the loud crashing sound, did you hear any voices? Like, like, could you make out if you heard a male or female's voice? I couldn't hear anything, no. Uh... Okay. So likely, something was fucked down the stairs that was heavy. And what do we have in this case that was heavy? The amount of shit coming out of Sarah's mouth, that's what. But also a suitcase. Um, it seems like a, an abusive relationship. Abusive. Just from every... every... Every time I heard them, every time like I saw the two of them, it just it it seemed rough. Okay. Well, you're not wrong there, and I got the Popo Five O reports to prove it for you, so you can watch and I'll I'll take you through. The neighbor had said it, Brian Boone had said it, and now I'll say it. The first report, police report uh, about Sarah or George. It goes back to 2018, which would have been about a year and a half into their relationship. Which is, as we see in a lot of true crime uh, cases, or just domestic violence cases, that's about mask off time. 
On the 25th of July, 2018, police were called to that very same apartment on Franz Court. In the documents, they keep referring to it, and the police keep referring to it as Franz Lane. It's not. The people who live there are to keep correcting them. It's Franz Court. So, the police arrived to Sarah and George's apartment shortly before uh, 2 a.m. And to cut a long story short, Sarah said essentially that George was beating the ever-living shite out of her. He'd beaten Seven Shades of Shite out of her and then strangled her. She told the police that she had been at a bar that evening. She had asked some random guy for a smoke. And George was not too keen uh, on that at all, I'm afraid. She said he became upset and he left the bar. When she got back, an argument ensued and she was dragged upstairs and he kicked her in the eye. But George told the police that uh, he, she had, had tried to strangle him and he had kicked Sarah to get her off him. In the eye. Fucking acrobatic. Now the report states that George's neck was red, like he had been strangled, and Sarah's eye was swollen, like she had been kicked. So what we got here are two drunk assholes beating the shite out of each other. They were both arrested, they were booked for battery, um, the case wasn't prosecuted though. Then in June of 2019, so about a year later, at 5pm on the 15th of June, police were called to that very same apartment yet again. Sarah called, she said George had beaten the crap out of her. She said, quote, she was beaten up, face, head, legs and arms, and that when she begged George to stop, he said, you are going to die. Again, she said this was due to her speaking to another man, and George was not too keen on that at all. Uh, possessive, I guess, is what she was saying. She did just have one lump on her head, but... I mean, I suppose it doesn't really matter. Uh, George, he was arrested and charged with domestic violence. Sarah did press charges this time, but the court didn't kind of follow through. They didn't think there was enough there and the case wasn't prosecuted. Now, after the police went to that house for the domestic on the 15th of June, three days later, the police were called yet again. Sarah was now claiming a George, uh, she was now claiming credit card fraud, that George was using her credit card, you know, uh, without her knowledge. But she did not wish to press charges, so... Then, one month later, on the 28th of August, the police were called yet again by Sarah. There's still a good few more of these. This time she says she was sleeping when he barged in and started kicking the shit out of her. She said she was fed up being hit. She did have marks and bruises. But when they spoke with him, so did uh, George. He said that she beat the shit out of him all the time and... What was he supposed to do, you know, if she was hitting him? This is, um... This is... What's the best way of putting this? Even Cyanide would call this relationship toxic. And then, shockingly, in September 2019, the police showed up to that house in Franz Court yet again. So this relationship was a big whole steaming heap on both sides, I think. They were somewhat violent, you know, on both sides. Or at the very least, I think both of them could give as good as they got. And they were both drunk, like, all the time. But still, they stayed together. Bad idea. You know, I've been covering true crime cases for quite some time, and put on your, your shocked face, because these things generally do not get better. It's like trying to put out fire with fire, and then being surprised your house burns down. Which is exactly what happened in February 2020, when George got into a suitcase, and he never got out. Slowly, suffocating to death inside. It's hard to think of a more horrific way to go. It's like nightmare fuel. I totally forgot that he was in the suitcase. He can tell you there's a lot of things that I slash we have been going <laughs> Jobs. Yeah, he did tell me. Life, all, all that stuff. good stuff. So, can or, I have a cigarette, please? Ma'am, I can't take anything out of the house. It's on the back porch. Nope, all of it. It's secure, okay? This was totally, like, not intentional like that's what i'm scared about too like okay. on the 25th of february george underwent an autopsy and he had injuries long scratches on his mid to upper back a large scratch on the back of his neck bruises on his left shoulder left side of his face and forehead if he was in a suitcase that went down the stairs as the neighbor heard something like that well, that's that. He also had a split lip. The official cause of death was asphyxiation. So the same day as that autopsy, the police brought Sarah in uh, for a follow-up interview. Just 
going to have you fit the green chair that doesn't move. <coughs> Appreciate you coming in. Yes, ma'am. Can I, I want to ask you about these whenever we have a moment? Sure. Um, so, obviously, um, he received his autopsy. So, I'm going to read you your rights again because I, we have to talk about that. And since I'm talking about the incident, we just have to do it. Just, just like we did yesterday. Protocol. Just like we did yesterday. Remember I read you the rights? Yeah. Right? yeah. So it's the exact same thing, but since I'm asking you. This morning we went to his autopsy, um, and we were informed of some injuries that he has uh, by the doctor. So I want Where? Um, So he's got <coughs> scratch marks to his back. I know what that's from. Okay. And... Um, it's called a contusion. Do you know what a contusion is? So, like, basically you're getting hit, and then, you know, you you, you get a mark from it. You'll get bruising. Like, some, okay. someone hit you or something like mm -hmm. that. It's called a, a contusion. Okay. What about the scratches? Because <sighs> there's also sex? Yes. Okay. I haven't laid a hand on him. Okay. I have not touched <clears throat> him. I have not touched him. Then how would you get those injuries? Tell me and we'll both know. I have not touched him. They talked about the marks on his body, the abuse between the two of them, and Sarah this time though. She was very defensive of George. She was, he was too good for this world. And he was trying. He was really trying. Just, and then he starts to think about things and it just, I think he gets overwhelmed. And then it's like, the next thing I know, he's drinking. So it's like, oh man, I know where this is going to go. So I'm going to go upstairs and read a book. Or I'm going to go for a bike ride or I'm going to do something else. Or I don't want to drink. I don't want to drink. The occasional wine, whatever, or if it's a weekend, that's when you, you have a good time. You don't have to wake up the next day. I have to wake up the next day and do things. I have to tend to Lucas. I have to take him to school. I have all this stuff to do. He doesn't know how to, I guess, maintain himself where... And you know what? You ask me. And I'm asking me, Sarah, she was a goddamn national hero. I miss him a lot, and I didn't even sleep last night. I miss him a lot. I mean, is there any chance it got to be too much for you, and you couldn't handle taking care of him? And I never stopped. Trying to I never help stopped. Him. That's what I'm here for. I never stopped. I'm here now, because I'm still trying to help him. Me so Yeah. Let me tell you this for free. She excelled at everything. I don't think you all understand who I am. Where okay. Well, tell me. I mean, I've always been a straight-A student. I am an outstanding mother to my son. Okay. I excel at everything. What that has to do with her current situation, I do not know, because she's clearly not excelling it you know, at this point in time, so maybe you scratched it off your resume. Now cracks had begun to form in Sarah's story of how much alcohol she had, you know, during the night of. Initially, she said she had half a bottle, and then the next day she had said she was kind of drunk and passed out, and then she was saying, actually, no, uh, I just had a couple of glasses, you know, nothing major, because she, as she says, she wants to keep her, her, her compass menti, is the phrase she always uses, or just wants to keep her wits about her. You're you're making it sound like like he's a raging alcoholic today and yesterday I was kind of asking you those questions and you're like a little defensive like no we're not alcoholics he I'm not we are not you know but you guys were both sober on Sunday to your knowledge because when I said you went and passed out you were like no I didn't pass out I just fell asleep so now it's kind of like what is it is were you guys drinking and it got out of hand and no. It got physical? No! Or is it... Sunday was one of the better <coughs> days that we have had in quite some time. Then she changed that. Well, you'll, you'll uh, look forward to that. We just don't... I mean, it's unexplainable how he got these injuries, and... I have no idea. You were the only one with him. A hundred percent right hand to God. I have no idea how he got them. Um, you had mentioned that you take, uh, you would take photos, videos, have you ever zipped him up in a suitcase prior? No. Okay. Why do you say it like that, though? I would <laughs> never do that. 
Okay, so do you remember making any videos or maybe having any cover, anything, any photos, videos that you remember doing on your phone on Sunday? No. <coughs> no. See, the police had discovered something on Sarah's phone when they got it off her. Sarah, she had an iPhone excess. Uh, she gave the police both written and verbal consent to download all, the, you know, the data on her phone to have a good old goo about it, you know what I mean? Not sure why she did so, because this would prove to be a very bad idea for Sarah Boone. Two videos were discovered on Sarah's phone. One was about two minutes long, the other was about 20 seconds long. Here's a portion of the first video. I won't show you much because honestly, it makes me sick thinking about what George was going through uh, at that moment in time. But I mean, you know, I'm telling you this story, so I guess I kind of got to show you. Sarah. For everything you've done to me. Sarah. For everything you've done to me. Sarah. Fuck you. Sarah. <laughs> Fuck you. Sarah. <laughs> Stupid. Sarah. That's my name. Don't wear it up. Sarah. I can't fucking breathe, babe. Seriously. Yeah, that's when you do when you choke me. The suitcase is upside down too, so it would have been impossible for him to get out unless it was flipped over. Well, she said she only had half a bottle. It sounds like she had a metric shit ton more than that. She's a sputin, spewing crocs of shite. Here's the second video. It was taken uh, 11 minutes after the first one. So how long George was inside that suitcase? We're not sure. Um, but yeah, in the second video, you can see the suitcase has been moved. So clearly this was no accident, what happened to George. He was begging to be let out of the suitcase and she was laughing. I guess he got in willingly, you know, as part of the game. She zipped it up very securely and would not let him out as he slowly suffocated to death and she was having a grand old time, sipping on wine and watching it like it's TV. Horrible way to go, made even worse when she at some point must have dragged the suitcase over to the stairs. I mean, you see George, he seems like a pretty small skinny guy so I guess he wouldn't have been that heavy and she at one point she throws the suitcase down the stairs if what the neighbor said was true and that would make sense with the injuries he had. The first video was taken at 11 12 p.m. the second 11 23 p.m. the neighbor heard the crash between half 10 and 11 so she probably had him in that suitcase for some time. She got in she trimmed in the stairs and then she took this video these videos. Now in the video he's very calm uh, he's not screaming at her, he's not shouting at her, I think he's really just trying to talk her off a ledge. He knows what she's doing and he's like trying to not push her and be like, Hey, uh, joke's over, ha. Huh? She just uh, cursed him out. So, the police had these. Sarah did not know that. Uh, I don't know, she must have forgotten. Maybe she was really, really drunk and she simply forgot she took the videos. So what did Sarah herself think when the police showed them to her? Sarah. Anything, any photos, videos that you remember doing on your phone on Sunday? No. Um, so I have something that I want to show you that we found. Um, and it was from your phone. Mm -hmm. Can you see it? If you need to move it around, go ahead. Oh. No, I don't remember that. For everything you've done to me. Yeah, well. For everything you've done to me. Your battery's about to die. Sorry, you You guys are scaring me. Sorry. Let me just tell you, do I have to watch this? I continuously throw up. I don't sleep. I don't want to see it, if that's okay. <clears throat> well, it's on your phone. 
and you can either explain it or we take it for what it is. Yeah, we're just trying to give you the opportunity to tell us what's going on. That's it. It's that long? Two minutes. No. You're laughing in the beginning, and then in the end, it sounds kind of like a no. It's not malicious. <laughs> Stupid. Well, saying fuck you. It's not malicious. Then what is that? What does fuck you mean to you? Well. Yikes. She did not have a have what I would say is a great answer to that. You know, you know what's on that video now? No. You remember making that video? No. Oh. Why don't you remember making the video? Probably because we had been drinking. But you weren't drunk. No. Does you it mean told that us you times that you were not drunk? You said that you had your wits <coughs> about you. You said he had his wits about you. My intention was not to leave him in there. She said it was unintentional. She could easily unzip it from the outside, so she assumed he could from the inside. She was drunk, and well, you know, she didn't mean to, so what more do you want from me? You said you were up there 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, somebody not coming up. I Knowing that you that the last time you saw him was in the suitcase, 30 minutes later, you're like, hmm, maybe I should go check on him? Maybe I shouldn't? No. You wouldn't lock some, zip somebody in a suitcase? Well, I didn't, like, completely lock it. I mean, I okay. opened it with one finger. I left enough in there for him to get out. Okay. And then she takes the tactic of... of Okay, okay, I hear you. All right, shut up for a second, will you? Think about it this way. If you don't mind, please. So you all are assuming that it's like, oh, good, I got him in there, now I'm going to go to sleep? Is that what you all are assuming? Please do not assume. What, you think I just locked him in the suitcase and left him in there? What you been, what you been smoking? Check your assumptions, you fucking pig. Well, it's not an assumption when that's what you told us that happened. That's what mm -hmm. happened. And the video... No. Yeah, I mean, but I'm not gonna say you thought he could get out on his own. Yes. But the video shows that he cannot get out on his own. I did not zip it up all the way. Sarah is the real victim here, guys. It was not intentional. This is horrific, okay? Horrific. It is terrible. Yeah, horrific. I don't think I'll ever be right because of this. Ever be right dealing with everything else that I have in my life, personally, okay. and then this, okay. whom I loved, it was not intentional. I will put my hand on the Bible. It was not intentional. I would not do that to him nor anyone else. But you did. Not intentional. What is so hard to understand? Not intentional. He asked multiple times. He asked to be let out. I can't breathe. What? Like, why didn't you let him out? Well, number one, I uh, number one, I had no idea it was going to end like that. Okay. Number one. Okay. Uh, number two, just you know what? I'll give you five minutes or so in there. That's. I'll give you five minutes or so. Five minutes for what? Well, based off the video, one video is at 11.12 and the next one's at 11.23, so you actually gave him at least 11 minutes per video recording. See, and then it's all backfired on me. Like, it's all backfired on me. And I understand the severity of this. I just... You're done. It's awful, I know. Okay. It's awful. And I will tell you both this right now, too. I will never drink alcohol again. Okay. She's taking this so seriously, guys. She's not going to drink anymore. That's how seriously she's taking it. No more booze for me after this one. <sighs> and it's not fair. It is not fair. You guys are trying to, again, oh, he's in there. Night, night. That's what happened. No. That's absolutely what happened. Intentionally. I don't know what you all want me to tell you. Like, this is not fair. At all, at all, yes. that you all are assuming that that's from me. Where else did it come from? If you were, say it's opposite, you were in the suitcase and you're asking to be let out, would you hope that that person would let you out? Like, you're asking to be let out of a suitcase, should they not let you out? Uh, eventually. I'm guessing. I mean, I don't. I'm blaming it on the wine. <laughs> blaming it on the wine? She speaks to the police like they're her parents and she just had a house party and trashed the place. 
The wine made me do it. Blame the wine. Alcohol is a shitty thing. It's alcohol. Arrest the bottle, go on. You all? Please sit down. Listen to me. Please you down. all, listen. I did not, not intentionally kill him. It's not cool. Like, this is not cool. It's not cool. That it. He's dead. It's but not you cool. think. She really does not believe she's about to be arrested, or what she did is really that serious at all. What do I need to, like, do I need to be doing something, or, like, I can't tell you what to do. I mean, like, so, like, for, like, I don't understand, like, I don't know if you guys are just gonna, like, because it makes it sound like to me, like, I'm being accused of something that was not intentional. I'm being accused of it. And a handful of other things that I'm being accused of. Okay. I'm not admitting anything about being intentional and I killed George. That's not the situation, but it's trying to depend on me. Sorry. That was not my intent. For everything you've done to me. But it's trying to depend on me. So however or whatever it is I need to do in order for that to be proven, then I need to do so, which is why I'm trying to get my ducks in a row. Okay. So that's why I'm asking what the next step is other than me getting my nails swapped. I mean, you want me to tell you how to not be accused of a crime? Is that what you're asking? Like, I don't know what you I'm want. trying to prepare myself for whatever may need to be done so I can, I, I guess, stick up for myself. I mean, I think you're doing just fine. And again, if you don't mind me asking, so for whatever it is you all are claiming from the videos, which, yeah, it's... Fuck you. Is that what you're going to tell him? Like, his parents? It's like, oh, yeah, and by the way, she did. Did what? I get it. Look, I get it. That looks really bad. Mm -hmm. So that's what scares me. Like, what do I need to plan on? Like, what do I need to plan on? I promise you, on my son's life, it was not intentional. I promise you, on Lucas's life, it was not intentional. <clears throat> I don't know you. I can't say I know anything about you. I don't know what is, what would be a true statement, what would not. I mean, you're promising on your son's life, that's fine. She tells him her plans and what she's about to do, and well, guys, shit happens. <laughs> I'll see you at the bar. Okay, Sarah, so you're not free to go, okay? Oh, do you promise everything you told us is the truth? Or no? <clears throat> everything we've talked about today? Yes, what do you mean? You need to turn around, face the wall, put your hands behind your back. Do you have anything in your pockets that I should know about? No. Okay. Why is this happening? Because George is dead. Not intentionally. We understand that. He's still dead. Your response to everything was basically, I didn't do it. Intentionally. It doesn't matter. He's still dead. Do me a favor. Have a seat. <coughs> Really, guys? Really? I, don't, I had a I don't sneaky work suspicion this was going to happen. Okay. And I need water, like, really bad, please. Okay. You all check me down here. <coughs> Absolutely did not. We were trying to figure out what's going on. We're still trying to figure out what's going on. Unintentionally. Uh, or not, George is dead. <laughs> you act like when you say unintentionally, that absolves you from everything. What made you all decide to do this? Made us decide to do this? Uh-huh. George is dead. I'm really not sure if she did mean to do what she did. 
Uh, she was drunk, and it was an extremely toxic relationship with physical violence on both sides that was going to lead to this eventually. I would say that she was shocked at what happened when she woke up. I mean, she just sounded absolutely pissed in the video. Uh, she probably woke up not really realizing what had happened. Hung over to shit, probably, too. Uh, which would explain why she keeps asking for water when the police arrived. Water? Just water. Please, I need water. But, um... And that it probably was a stupid drunken mistake, but I imagine her initial reaction was, Oh crap! Followed by, Oh well. Sarah Boone was arrested and charged with second degree murder. Sarah Boone pleaded not guilty. This, the whole suitcase thing, never happened before. Would you leave someone else in a suitcase? Would you leave Lucas in a suitcase jokingly? Because it was a no. joking matter. You put him in there jokingly. Would you leave Lucas jokingly no. in there? And you love Lucas, right? And you love I wouldn't George. do that to him either. I wouldn't do that to him. This picture from Sarah Boone's Facebook page of a child appearing to be playfully zipped into a suitcase. So this was in February 2020. There have been many delays since then. Ma'am, good morning. Your name? Sarah Boone. Miss Boone. 42 year old Sarah Boone faced a judge Wednesday morning charged with second degree murder. Detectives say she left her boyfriend, 42 year old Jorge Torres Jr., in a suitcase in their Winter Park apartment to die. Based on the evidence in the case, the autopsy findings, which include significant evidence of trauma to multiple sites on the victim's body. The state asked for no bond. The judge agreed. According to the arrest report, Boone told Orange County deputies she and her boyfriend were playing hide and seek when they thought it would be funny if he got into the suitcase. She says she zipped him inside. Hours later on Monday afternoon, deputies say Boone called 911 saying Torres was dead. In fact, you guys, you know, I, I wanted to cover the story of Sarah Boone for quite some time. Um, and every time I, I would look, I'd be like, oh, hey, the trial's coming up soon. I'll, you know, I'll just wait till then, till when the trial is over. And it's been delayed a shitload of times. So here I am just making the video now. Still waiting. Uh, the trial has been cancelled six times, my dudes. There has been a million defense recusals, uh, which I don't blame uh, those attorneys at all who the shit would want to work with Sarah Boone. Here's a letter she wrote to one of her attorneys. Um, it's pretty pathetic. And it's basically just like, why won't you talk to me? This was in early October. I am writing in regards to not hearing from you and am becoming very concerned after receiving no response to any of my daily calls or from the letters I've sent. With no communication makes my end more difficult, drawn out and painful. Please figure out whatever necessary for my phone calls to be answered, which you will be reimbursed for when you submit your costs. You are my sixth attorney, not by choice and the magnitude of my case with not knowing what's going on or where you are, how much harder it is for me. No two, I am patient. Clearly, after all the time already invested. Wait a minute. She's in jail and she's calling that invested time. And she's being patient. In jail. I am patient and still smiling and willing to go above and beyond whatever I slash we need to do to properly and truthfully convey my very convoluted, misunderstood side of everything which I boldly told you in our meeting last month. God has put us in each other's paths for a reason, and I can't wait to see what you and he will do. I'm praying the six times the charm. Please respond. The trial is now actually due to begin at the end of January 2023. Let's see if it actually will. That's from when I'm posting this video three months so look forward to that it's like the next star wars movie but who knows and that is the end of this old video my friends i hope you enjoyed it as you probably know i'm going to a one video a week schedule um it might not even be tuesdays and fridays it'll just be whenever the video is done but it just means i can make spend more time per video and make videos bigger and better which i'm very very excited for because there's often cases i just want to really delve into and now i can so um yeah, I'm pretty psyched about that. I hope you are too. But as I said, there's also some more of that chapter coming along the way. 
but I'll tell you more later. Thank you as always for the just amazing support. I, I would not be here without each and every one of you, and I don't think I'll ever be able to thank you guys enough for the love and support uh, I've gotten, um, and I hope you enjoy the future That Chapter stuff to come. Um, there's a lot. Um, I, as I've showed you guys before, my little book of all the things I want to make videos about, there's a good few, I would say. By that I mean hundreds. But anyway, I will see you as always real soon in the next old video, which will be coming soon. So take care of yourselves until then, because you know what? I love you. Mike out.